Finally, I get a non-controversial topic. Let's go. So it's been asked and I've done a little bit on why don't I drive, uh, but from that, how do I get around? So let's talk about the different modes of transportation available to you, <clears throat> some idea of cost, and so you can decide whether you want to get a car, a motorcycle, or rely on the public transportation. Number one, planes. Now this is more for coming into the country. But it's, a, it's another common question. Should I fly into Quito or should I fly into Guayaquil? The problem is the flights in and out of Cuenca are really problematic. You can't count on them. You can book a flight. It'll bring you to Quito, for example, and then you get a lake to Cuenca. Except maybe that's not flying today or maybe the next day. For a couple months it wasn't flying. It tends to be a little hit and miss. And then if you're flying into Quito, you run into the problem of it's nine hours away from Cuenca, probably at the fastest, and it's an uncomfortable ride for a good portion of it. So that may not be the best way to go. So if you fly into Guayaquil, it's about three and a half hours to Cuenca a lot less time and a lot less expensive, of course. That may be the better way to go, particularly if you're pressed for time. Number two, trains. Well, there are some trains and there's a couple routes, like part of Guayaquil to Quito, sort of, that'll operate, but Really, the trains that exist in Ecuador are for death-defying thrill-seekers. You've got the devil-nosed train that killed thousands of people building it, and it's chiseled into the side of the mountain, and you, you look out the window and you see down thousands of feet. It has mudslides. It gets washed out every once in a while. You're taking your life in your hands. So, trains, not so much. Number three, bus or bus. Now we're talking. This is transportation that will take you anywhere in the country. Probably the most expensive fee is about $20. Typically, it's, well, from Cuenca to my house, it's a dollar. So, it's a, it's a good, fairly reliable way to go. But the downside, well, you've got your maniac drivers. They think they're in NASCAR, but they're driving a bus with 60 people in it. And these are mountain roads with sheer drop-offs and, as I mentioned, mudslides. So trying to get the most out of a bus as you're whipping around these corners isn't the best way to go. It also makes you kind of sick and queasy or bruised from banging around. So that can be an issue depending on the, the run. Also maintenance on some of the lines, not the best in the world. You know, a lot of it has to do with these low fares that's forced on them. Maybe they can't afford those new tires. It's pretty common to have a bus plunge off to its death every couple times a year. So buses are great, but eh, might have an issue. Minivans, number four. Now mini, minivans are not bad. Their, their fares are about double what a bus is. So if a bus is $8 somewhere, it might be $16. Yeah, ballpark. But minivans have some pretty good advantages. For example, they tend to be pretty well maintained. But the best thing is, if the driver starts getting a little crazy, you can just say, hey, buddy, stop it. And they will. Also, 
on the buses, if you need to pee, yeah, they got bathrooms in the back, but they don't let you use them most of the time. But on a minivan, you can do the, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? He'll pull over and let you use the toilet. Or somebody's thirsty or hungry. He's not going to make endless stops. But every once in a while, somebody will request, and I've seen that they accommodate. Their, the customer service is better. So minivans are not a bad way to go. You certainly have less bruising. Taxi. Number five. Taxis are pretty good. Taxis are my favorite mode of transportation. Here in Hidom, anywhere you go, it's $1.50. That's the minimum charge, $1.50. If I take a taxi from Cuenca to Hiron or vice versa, it's $20. On the meter, it's probably $17. But, you know, it's kind of just customary because you're tying them up for a while and that sort of thing. In Cuenca, you can go across town for about $5, but most places you're, gonna, you're going to go is $2, $2.50, something like that. Taxis are pretty reasonable considering the time and the distance. Um, it's not a bad way to go. It's a pretty safe way to go, particularly since they have meters, it's a pretty economic way to go. Uh, used to be a problem without the meters, that's kind of gone away. So taxis are cool. Just keep in mind with taxis that in the evening the fares go up quite a bit. So you're going to pay a lot more after 7 or 8 o'clock, I'm not sure the cutoff. Uh, probably about 7 o'clock, the rates are going to go up, the meter is going to go faster. If you're not a night owl, it won't make a bit of difference. You've also got green and white pickup trucks that are taxis, they're trucks for hire, quad cabs, and you see those everywhere in the countryside. Uh, we've got, in Hidon, we've got yellow taxis, but most of them are the green and white pickup truck quad cabs. They're really useful, they're really handy, the fees are the same, but they're not metered. So you want to make sure that you have an understanding before he drives away of what it's going to cost you. Because if you don't, then you're going to have to pay him whatever he tells you when you arrive. And if he decides he can get $6 out of you instead of 3 he might do that. But if you get in and tell him where you're going to go, and you tell him $3, right? And when he agrees, you're good to go, and then he's obligated to do it for the $3, and I never see a problem with that. Number six, drivers. Drivers are useful. You want to get to know one or two or three as soon as possible. They're really handy. For example, I needed to go to Gualaseo, it's the other side and over the mountains from Cuenca, from Hiron. That's a bit of a, it's a bit of a trip. If I'm going to do buses, I'm going to take a bus to the bus station, get on another bus, and then it, it, it's kind of a mess, there's delays, I, I don't like that. If you get in a taxi, it's going to cost you, it adds up, that trip would probably be sixty seventy dollars round trip with the delays and that sort of thing that I needed so what do I do I talked to my local guy here he have, he, he actually owns one of the quad cab green and white but I've gotten to know him and I and I tell him where I want to go what I'm gonna do and how long it's gonna be and I've got to go shopping so you're gonna be waiting in a half an hour basically it's an all-day event and he says 45 and I said, oh, geez, I don't know. That's a lot. How about 30 We settled on $35. So he drives me up to Cuenca. I have to do something. I go to Gualaseo. We wait, contact the guy. He shows up finally after half an hour of waiting. We do our transaction. We come back. I do some grocery shopping. He's waiting. Brings me home. All-day event, $35. Thank you very much. It's good to have drivers for out of the ordinary type of things that you're going to want to do from time to time. Self. This is a U.S. concept. 
you're going to have your motorcycle, you're going to have a car, and you're going to do it yourself. I won't go into detail here because I posted two videos, one about going to jail, if you're going over the limit by a certain amount, it's like seven miles an hour or something like that. It's a three day mandatory in jail. I'm not for those things. Getting the license, sending for the information, taking the test in Spanish. Yeah, there's ways around all of this. The bureaucracy, the matriculation fees, the paperwork, just handling all of this stuff. I don't want any of that. It's just too complicated. It's expensive. You're paying double for a car what it's worth. I don't want to do that. If it's a $5,000 car, it's a $5,000, it's $10,000, $12,000, whatever they can get. It's not for me. Somebody hits you. They get out. They run away. No, I don't, I don't want that. So, yeah, you can do it. But I don't want the problems with that. It's not for me. Number eight. Tranvia. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Sueños. You know, it was a nice thought. It was a, it was a nice dream to have this little electric vehicle running through the town, that kind of thing. But the people didn't ask for it. The people didn't want it. There's a gigantic problem of bus pollution. These big blue monsters that you see in, in these videos that I do, blowing out huge clouds of black smoke. It burns your eyes and it burns your lungs and it's all day long. You, you know, this is going on. It's nasty. The Trambia is what? Over $200 million? Nobody even knows for sure. It was supposed to be done a couple years ago. It didn't get done. It's maybe a year or two from now. They're having to go back and redo a lot of the work, to the inferior concrete. Some of it that was done two years ago looks like it was done 20 years ago. So they're redoing sections of it. This is a never ending thing. People have gone out of business because of construction. It's been a nightmare. And people didn't ask for it. This is what happens when you get a socialistic government that decides for the people what's best for them. What would have been best for them is if they had taken a quarter of that money and put it into hybrid buses. They could have gotten rid of all these blue polluting monsters that are killing everybody. And they could have replaced them with new, modern, hybrid, virtually no exhaust buses, saved a ton of money, and they could have implemented it years ago and they would have been reaping those benefits. But no! We gotta have a Tranvia because they have them in Europe. They got them in France and we wanna be cool. So we may get a Tranvia, not this year, maybe next year. Every year it just keeps, it was actually supposed to be done two years ago. So I, I don't know, I don't know. Um, we will see. So that's transportation choices you have, some ideas of what you may or may not want to do. I hope it does you some good. You know you could.